On Saturday, my mother pulled me aside and told me that someone who was like a grandmother to me had passed away. While this wasn't unexpected, as she had been sick for a long time, it still broke me. Granny w went to every dance recital, every performance, and was a constant source of love and support in my life. I live every day hoping to make her proud. That night, I went into my room, I turned on the TV, and I put on my favorite Marvel movie. In it, I saw characters who were going through the same emotions I was experiencing. Grief, pain, loss. I felt seen. And when they got up and continued fighting, I felt that I could too. It genuinely helped, and it made me wonder if other people felt this way too. According to the National Institute for PTSD, 6% of Americans suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. Statistically speaking, that means that for every 50 people in your life, three of them have PTSD. And those are just the people who are diagnosed. On a very different note, did you know that the Marvel Cinematic Universe is the highest grossing film franchise of all time with $29.6 billion earned? That is an insane amount of money. Dozens of characters, hundreds of movies, all captivating millions of people with their heroic feats and superhuman abilities. Now, you might be wondering what this has to do with PTSD, and that's a fair question. But I raise you one. You'd think that if these characters are saving the world time and time again, it would be pretty easy to represent that 6% of Americans through those characters. I mean, think about it. If you're constantly putting your life on the line, facing destruction and death, you would probably have some sort of trauma. I mean. How is it these characters aren't in therapy every other scene? <laughs> this got me wondering, do Marvel movies represent PTSD responsibly? Today, I'm going to be examining a couple different superheroes who, given their circumstances and experiences, should have PTSD, and assess whether their on-screen depiction accurately portrays someone suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Before I do, however, I want to make one thing clear. I am by no means an expert on this topic, and I have not been diagnosed with PTSD. To be honest, I'm just a nerd with a microphone <laughs> who's devoted way too much time and money to this franchise. <laughs> the first superhero I'm sinking my metaphorical claws into is Captain America. In his first movie, Steve Rogers becomes the perfect soldier without really knowing what that means. He goes through hundreds of missions deep behind enemy lines. He loses his best friend who's been by his side all of his life, and he still comes out the other side in one piece. Steve tries to pretend that everything is fine. But if you look closely, you can see the little tells and signs of someone fighting an internal battle. Throughout multiple movies, Steve Rogers shows an intense need for control. He appears unwilling to discuss what he's been through. And most of all, he seems to cling to the people and things he had before and during the war that changed his life. All of these are symptoms and effects of PTSD, especially the need for control. However, Steve Rogers does not remain in denial. Instead, he works to better himself. One very good example of this is how in the movie, Captain America, the Winter Soldier, my personal favorite, <laughs> Steve Rogers is shown not participating in a support group being run by Sam Wilson, instead just choosing to watch. However, in Avengers Endgame, he's shown not only participating in, but leading a PTSD support group. While it may not be shown outright on screen, that change shows enormous amounts of growth. 
it can also show someone who might also be suffering from PTSD that it does get better. It gets easier even if it takes a while. And that growth, that change, that progress can be the thing that someone needs to re reach out for help. And that can be the difference between finding peace and suffering in silence. Another Marvel character who's had her fair share of trauma is Wanda Maximoff. Wanda has been through a lot, including the deaths of her parents at 10 years old due to weapons made by Stark Industries. Then she's forced to have powers by, I kid you not, evil Nazi scientists. Yeah. Then she loses her brother and is forced to kind of grapple with the way society views her. Eventually, she loses her husband and her children. That's a lot for anyone, I think we can all agree. Wanda's life has been riddled with war and pain and suffering, so she does what she can to find her own peace. What does Wanda do to cope with all this? She creates a fictional reality set in the late 20th century in which she holds an entire town hostage in this facade just so she can live with her husband and children. Standard stuff, we've all done it. I mean, <laughs> I did it last week. Um, <laughs> this representation shows just how much trauma can really affect someone. Some people think that PTSD recovery will be easy, but it's not. It can be ugly, it can be painful, it can be mean. It's hard. And Wanda's character makes that clear. Last up on the list today is Princess Shuri of Wakanda. At the start of the movie, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Shuri is shown desperately trying to save her brother T'Challa. Despite her multiple attempts, she is unable to save her brother, and this causes her to throw herself into her work in the hopes of saving her home from the many imminent threats that face it. Shuri loses a lot in the movie. She may have grown by the end of it, but she's not fine, far from it. I think that the filmmakers did a responsible job of depicting just how much trauma can affect someone despite storms calming down and time passing. She may burn the burial garments of her mother, a Wakandan tradition signifying the end of a mourning period, but she is still affected and is in pain because of the death. And that can be really beneficial for someone to see. It is incredibly important to see characters like you in media. It can show that you're not alone, that you're not the only person who acts or thinks or feels or looks like you do. And that can be such a freeing feeling. And it's one that I think is so important to show. Time does not ensure resolution. Healing is not linear. And when films show characters just moving on after a traumatic event, it can imply that there's something wrong with people who can't just move on. But that's not true. Now, hey, maybe a bunch of movies about characters who can do the impossible don't really have a lot of merit on real people suffering from PTSD. But according to a study published on, in 2021 by the National Library of Medicine, up to 54% of suicides in people with PTSD are attributable to their PTSD. You have to wonder why that is. Now, of course, there may be reasons that we don't know since we don't have PTSD ourselves, but there are things that we can think. Like maybe they felt lonely because they weren't normal anymore. Maybe they just didn't feel like they could reach out for help, possibly because of movies that portray a serious disorder as a plot device 
or something that can be easily overcome if you just try hard enough or even if you don't try at all. But thankfully, there are characters and there are movies, such as the ones I talked about today, that show how PTSD really is. And with accurate and good representation of PTSD comes acceptance, care, hope, peace, and healing for not only those who suffer from it, but for everyone. Thank you. <laughs>